We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine. That's Emily. And we had a race. We are in season now. It is, it is here. Finally. We're back, baby. Oh, I love race week. It makes me so happy. Except now I feel like tomorrow I'm going to work, but I'm not because it's right. still Saturday and we still have one more day on the weekend. So it's throwing me off a bit, especially to start the season, but we're back. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Ra- race day Saturday or Grand Grand Prix Saturday is is definitely throwing me off as well. Because yeah. I'm like, wait, I like I don't need to get the podcast out until Monday. We what have days? an extra day. Days are hard. So much. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a race. It was, it was a fine race. Like it was, it, you know, yeah, Max ran away with it, but I wouldn't call it, wouldn't have necessarily called it a bad race. No, it was, ex- I mean, as exciting as exciting can be when. It had know, exciting moments. Seconds, but yeah, I think the beginning was really good. I think the new one lap DRS, uh, rule is interesting um yeah granted you know max was already out of drs right <laughs> but that's okay um i think it'll be i think it'll really play into how the season starts at least um or how the starts go this season but it was yes. interesting i liked it we had racing we had some overtakes we had some teams who mm-hmm. weren't necessarily you know on the same page <laughs> just a bit just a bit. It's great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it it happened. It's here. Um, and we're just gonna go and see where the season takes us. And I think it's gonna like like I said, it's it's this is gonna be the season that everyone looks back on and says, This is where all this stuff started. I don't know what this stuff is, but this is where it's gonna start. Yeah, this this season is going to bring a lot, especially going into next season. A lot of drivers are driving for their seat for next season, this season. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to get some really, really good racing like we did today, even within teams. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially Yikes. within teams. Yikes. Um, but yeah. And I mean, to kick it all off, I just, you know, was happy to see Martin back doing his, mm-hmm. his, grid, his grid walk, which is now a self-proclaimed proclaimed a grid stroll Scroll? because of his his new ankle oh my gosh it's so funny he kills me I love the grid walk I've missed it I loved how Max asked him if he was okay yeah <laughs> like, hey Max how are we doing today? he's like great but but how are you are you okay <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> uh, it just kind of shows how relaxed Max is going into the race but yeah and I I, th- I thought it was you know so we've had some really like bad grid walks and and you you know the kind that I mean with like the people who don't want to talk to to Brundle which like as we have discussed very heavily if you're on the grid it is fair game um and you can you can say hello for 35 seconds Serena Venus Williams Rihanna etc um but yeah I thought this this was good the people were were willing to speak to him um he he was bopping around you know chatting with people and it was it was exactly what we want to see out of a grid walk more of this please good one to start the uh start the race race season yeah. off with so solid start solid start speaking of solid starts a team that is struggling and is uh not having the best start uh alpine so yeah. what five minutes before the race started uh two very high level alpine employees the technical director and the head of aerodynamics resigned <laughs> and yep. they're leaving the team in april <laughs> so yep great great start for alpine great start yeah it's Starting it's, it's another people are leaving yeah, it's it's another high level departure with a really weird like lead time. Like the, these no. these two people are they're not, like it's it's March second, um, and they're leaving in April. And I know like 
leave times are are a lot more common in the UK and in Europe than they are in the United States where we have a you know our 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 laws about employment are very different um but considering you have you know the really awkward Otmar is you know fired after spa type of thing from last season as we have discussed heavily in in uh, our our drive to survive recap um it's just it's it's another punch to the gut for Al- an alpine team that just looked so bad and like they knew that they were gonna look bad but like yeah, this is just now now you're you're losing your technical director and your head of aerodynamics and aerodynamics are one of the biggest problems that the alpine has because it is a overweight and b slow yeah they're struggling over there I don't yeah know. i mean maybe you resign before you get fired but like what's the difference at the end of the day yeah, it, it, it's, and maybe it was like a yeah. ask to resign thing because the car is in such bad shape. But yeah, I don't know. Who knows what's going it, on over there? Yeah, I'll, it's it's still very eleven, like not even eleventh hour. This is like twelfth hour type of like this it's happened twelfth and a half hour. The, like, <laughs> like legitimately, this know. happened during the formation lap. And another thing that I want to take a second to to bitch about is um, this this is something that I don't know if this has really come through a lot in the podcast episodes, but Emily and I have discussed this heavily in our DMs. Um, if the race director, race stewards are not going to do anything about the maximum lap time in practices and specifically in qualifying, then let's stop fucking bringing it up. Um, you know, it's, it's th- this it, 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 it is it is. It is unnecessary because, and, and form, you know, the, the race stewards, race director, they set a very bad precedence at Monza because, um, which two cars breached the maximum lap time at Monza. Oh, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari and the Tifosi would have rioted if they had lost their positions after that qualifying session. So therefore they did not have a leg to stand on precedence wise for any other race in the 2023 season. So then starting off 2024 with, Oh, you know, George Russell has been referred to the stewards because of a minimum lap time violation that he didn't get penalized for anyway stop bringing it up unless you're going to start penalizing drivers for breaching the, the maximum lap time. Like what, what do they have to do for it to be warranted as a, a breach? Because obviously, you know, if there's traffic or someone in the way, then, the, then, you know, that's, that's why they're letting these go, but like they're letting everything go. So there's, yeah, like- there's, there's no threshold for it. No. And the stopping in the pit lane too, like how many radio calls did we hear about they're not supposed to oh stop my in the pit lane. Why are they in the pit lane? It's taking so long in the pit lane. Can we pass them? We even saw some people like go in the middle lane of the pit to get out at the pit exit because people were going so slow or just stopping. So if they're not going to do anything about it or or say anything, like it just, I don't know, it's annoying. And we can hear it on the telecast from the presenters constantly. So. Yeah, and and that that's that's one that like Max almost got dinged for or did get dinged for at one point last season, tw- you know, toward the end that, you know, they're not so, like I know why they're doing it. They're going really slowly so that they can have more space so they come out on the track with less traffic um so they can, you know, have a better lap. I get it, but if if you're not allowed to stop or go slowly in the, you know, at the pit exit, then that's where you have to start issuing the fines and the penalties. Yeah. Exactly. 100% agree. Yeah. Not my, not, not, not Formula One's best moment of the weekend. I'll, I'll give them that. And Catherine, I hate to say it, but I think this is going to be a theme for the season. So. Yeah, it's going to be a theme. I'm not thrilled. Uh, it's okay. Your maximum time, uh, lap time is my track limits. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I'm so over track limits. Like, it seems like they're not going to call track limits on anybody, even though everyone's going off constantly and everyone is saying everyone's going off constantly. People are we love a good tattletale. And then nothing else happens. And it's like, okay, why do we have track limits if we're not going to enforce it? Yeah. So, there we go. <laughs> and we can step off our soapbox now and move on. <laughs> Yes, and and now we're going to complain about something else uh, that was a, that was something that we had issue with during today's race, um, oh. which 
it was very widely publicized that the viewing experience was going to be different and better this year. Um, but I really felt no change. And the only thing that I really noticed was, and I think this was less of a decision to stop doing and more of a production issue was there were no pit time there for most of the pit stops. There were no times for how long the cars were stationary, which is really freaking important to be able to see. Yeah, that was annoying. Like, I feel like yeah. the only ones that we got were when, like, Crofty mentioned it or or someone, like, said it on the telecast. They didn't actually show it on the screen for the most Yeah, there, there, were, there were a couple that, that were – I the first one that I noticed, because I, when, I, when I realized that they weren't there and started actively looking for it, was Max's first pit stop. Right. Um, and, and that's where it was. Then obviously by the time they got to Botas's, you know, 52 second pit stop, um, they, they were up and running. So I, I do think that that was a production issue. You know, the production truck is, is shaking off some rust. Um, yeah. but I think that the, the viewing experience was just as, you know, sometimes it has its moments of why are you showing me this picture um, when you could be showing me actual live racing instead of a 14th replay of Logan Sargent, you know, locking up and going off. Um, so, you know, it's it's something that everybody complains about all of the, you know, every race or something to complain yeah. about broadcast wise. Um, but I, I was waiting for it to be impressed and I, I was not. No, me neither. I was like the way that they were broadcasting how great it was going to be it felt the same but it also felt like very um not all the wheels were on the bus in the beginning of the, yeah little little bit of an issue exactly there. but anyways so now that yeah. we've complained for like you know the first i don't know 10 minutes of this podcast um should we talk yeah, about happens. like pos- positive things Maybe go ahead. Yeah, and I mean, po- <laughs> yeah, po- positively, Max Verstappen won the Bahrain Grand Prix by 22 whole ass seconds. Um, that's that's a long time. Um, it was his eighth consecutive win. He is two wins away from tying his record for consecutive race wins, which he set last season. Um, and when you know, Max Verstappen is somebody who notoriously is not very great off the line but this was probably one of the best starts I've ever seen from him yeah he had a really good start so did Checo um yeah they both had really good starts I mean I'm just saying that because like Red Bull Red Bull but it seems like the Red Bull is really good off the start um granted it's driver reaction time too but they both looked good yeah, it just Max is notorious for for being able to salvage like some pretty not so great starts so yeah. it was actually a surprise to just see him just like lights went out and he went away yeah. he away he gone um and so i as the the red bull fan of the podcast i'm happy to see that he's you know learning something new as the you know halftime supporter of max verstappen only um i thought he drove a really good race it i mean again we don't really see him in the telecast anymore because he's so far ahead he lapped everyone ex- like through 11th so if you got a point you weren't lapped by max but if you you know didn't get a point essentially where you were lapped by max verstappen um yeah. he's just so dominant and we and i and again am i his number one fan no but i give him a lot of credit and it's it's very impressive what he's doing. He had a really good drive. He, I mean, you can't not give him praise when he wins by 22 seconds. Yeah, and it's, you know, it was, there were some questions after the free practices and the qualifying of like, is this Red Bull going to be a goddamn rocket ship? And spoiler alert, it is. Um, oh, yeah. Like, I was a little nervous to pick him for pole because yeah. we, do, we do our selections before any free practices or anything like that. So coming out of testing, that's all we had on the Red Bulls. And it's like, well, I I feel like Max is an easy win, but I also don't know because who knows what's going to come out of it. So, and I mean, Leclerc even had a faster time in qualifying in Q2 than, you know, Max ended up winning qualifying or winning pole in Q3. So, I don't know. It's all about when you put together that lap. Exactly. It is. It is. So, yeah, but yeah, it was, 
It was good to watch him. Yeah, and then not only was you know Max incredibly dominant, this was his first Grand Slam of the year, which is pull, fastest lap, lead wire to wire, and obviously win the race. Um, this is his fifth in his career. He's tying with Els- Ascari and Schumacher um, for third all-time. Next, he's going after Lewis in P2 with six, and then Jim Clark with eight. Um, and I think that I don't know if he'll get them this year, but I think he'll 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 break that record in his career. Um, he's also the first uh, driver to score a Grand Slam in the season opener since Schumacher in 2004, which was before Red Bull was even a team. I feel like we just need a new section of this podcast of like Max's achievements. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, the Max Verstappen portion of the record book. Max Verstappen's record book portion of the podcast. Yes, and then we just rattle everything off. Oh my gosh, yeah. I know. It's it's wild. I just Yeah, what what Red Bull has been able to accomplish in 20 seasons is it's insane. Yeah. I mean, if you look, they they just had their 114th race win in 20 seasons. Williams has um the same amount of race wins but 27 more years in Formula 1 than Red Bull. Like that's obviously we know that that Williams is is struggling a little bit these these you know past decades um but like it's that's still a lot of wins even though the schedule is admittedly longer now than it was you know back in the the early days in the heyday of Williams yeah yeah it's funny to think like Williams used to be good because as of late they've struggled to get even yeah not a lot let alone wins so yeah and then on the other side of the Red Bull garage, we have Sergio Perez, who actually ran a pretty decent race. I know you're you're not you're not as big as fan, no, but this but was did. one of his better races in the last year that he's been in that car or no, in a was, Red Bull car. Yes, yes, yes. It was a good race for him. Like I said, he did get off and you know the starting line very well. He got away and immediately you know um, overtook uh, Carlos. Yeah. So he, no, he did drive a really good race. He had some good overtaking. I will give him that, but I don't really want to talk. I, about I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but I don't it was know his... why I have this hatred. I just do. <laughs> I know. Um, but it was his best finish since Monza last, last season. Um, and, you know, Qualifying fifth doesn't actually look great, but the fact that he was able to get the car up to, to second and also to keep the car in second, um, cause he, you know, late last season, he had two notoriously embarrassing last lap overtakes, one by Leclerc and one by Alonso. Um, so the fact that he was able to, you know, take P2 and then maintain position is something that we didn't see last year. And I'm really interested to, you know, obviously he's driving for his seat seat um but it'll be interesting it looks like he's driving for his seat like he's yeah it'll be interesting to see how his performance holds up through through the season you know obviously it's you know well will max continue to be dominant but will perez continue to you know be comparatively successful yeah i wonder i mean i have no idea but a thought that has kind of been in my head about this season is if he can continuously get p2 but he's continuously like 20 plus seconds behind max is that a good look for him or is that a bad look for him you know what i mean because i feel like their expectation is that he's competitive with max because they have the same car but if he's right continuously yeah out driven by max by like 20 plus seconds like is that where they really want their second red bull to be or it's like a solid p2 and we're happy with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And I think some of it, you know, some of that that you know big gap does come from you know he's on he's on a different strategy from Max. So not justifying you know being you know he, what he needs to do is he needs to be closer to Max in practices and qualifying. That's the yeah. really big question that we have for for Perez right now is you know how is he going to be you know shaking up against max with you know minimal fuel on one lap um and then the rest of it we'll see how it plays out yeah no that's fair and i think maybe you know going into next week maybe he qualifies closer to max because max was p1 he was p5 in qualifying so maybe them starting closer will bridge that you know 
that gap of 22 seconds. Um, it'll be interesting. Yeah, exactly. But. Speaking of also very interesting, oh, Carlos signs. My man, Carlos. Oh my gosh. I love how he's no longer driving for Ferrari and he's driving for a team Carlos needs a seat next year. Yes. I'm all for it. I'm all for not following team orders and just driving the heck out of that Ferrari. Oh my gosh. He had such a good race. He overtook Leclerc twice. Uh, yeah. It was awesome. I'm I'm so happy. I feel like it's not going to be great for the team this year, but I don't care because Carlos needs to show that he's an amazing driver. Everyone knows it, but um, I really hope he beats Charles Leclerc in Drivers' Championship this year just to kind of stick it yeah. to Ferrari before he leaves. Yeah, I... I I think a the 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 Ferrari versus Ferrari was some of the most exciting racing that we saw today especially in the first half of the race because that that you know second third of the race was was very much you know very processional which is is what it is um but I think that not only did Carlos drive one hell of a race I think he outdrive outdrove the car um cuz I think that you know, yes, the Ferrari is phenomenal on one lap, but based on, you know, obviously, you know, one race's performance is not indicative of all, you know, of all the good and all the bad, but I am a little concerned with Ferrari based on their performance and also based on the setup issues that Leclerc had today, because, you know, he, he was the, like the most despondent P4 finisher I've ever seen. Yeah. No, I agree. I think it was, they kept mentioning the wind and how the wind was changing. So I feel like this race in general for every car, that was a factor. So it's not necessarily, we can take results of this weekend going into the rest of the season. Um, This is also a really difficult track because of all the sand and the, on the track and everything. So I think it is, you know, that's harder on the tires, tire management, things like that. It's also unseasonably cold, I think right now they were saying. Yes. Unless so, you're Ted Kravitz and you always wear shorts. <laughs> God love him. That was that was something um, that they made a, a very, like, they made a point to make a point of that. Well, and so, for again, numbers, it's really hard for me because they do everything in Celsius. And I'm like, is that cold? Is it warm? I should know because I live in a country that uses that system, but I'm still struggling. It's fine. I just, I just smile and nod whenever they talk about the temperature. Exactly. But yeah, so unseasonably cold. So that played a factor into it as well. So again, I think this, this weekend, we're not going to get a ton of information going into the season. I think we'll see the grid change up in places change moving forward. Yeah, we, definitely. We, we have probably not until like China, Japan, are we really going to see what these, you know, what the cars look like, where, yeah. where cars are underperforming or are doing better than expected. Um, at the same time, a team that did do a little bit better than expected, I think was Haas. Cause like, no, they weren't oh, great, yeah. but Kevin Magnuson, who is usually always overtaken in his Haas, was able to hold off both RB cars at the end of the race. Um, yeah. And obviously, Nico Hulkenberg had a phenomenal qualifying and just had an awful, you know, first lap incident that sent him way into the back um, that he couldn't recover from because that Haas is, is not the best. But it, I think it showed that, you know, they might be able to be somewhat competitive in that bottom portion of, you know, I don't, I don't see them as the P10 team this year. No, I point. mean, I think they'll at least get a point. Dinner time. Check. Um, I think, I think they'll get a, you know, they're not going to scrape together a ton of points, no. um, but I think that they will score better than last season. They probably, I, I could see them beating the stake car at the very least. Um, and maybe or even Alpine, Alpine cause Al- Alpine is a big concern after, after this, this weekend's performance that said Haas is known to have a better first half of the season than the than second. second half, so yeah. that it'll be a question to see if they'll, they'll be able to pace development, which is a money issue that, you know, they notoriously do not have a lot of money which is one of the reasons why they parted ways their, with their previous team principal so current new team principal current team principal Ao Komatsu um has a lot of work ahead of him to see if they can you know get lucky a little bit yeah but I think also they were saying they were going to be p19 and p20 just to temper expectations um 
And I, but I, I also mean, think that like I some of that was legitimate thought. Yeah, I do too. But it was probably, I mean, media bluff, whatever you want to call it. But I also don't think they knew <laughs> what the Alpine was going to do when they made that comment. right, <laughs> or how bad steak was going to be, or sauber, or whatever we're calling it. Let's just call him um, Sabra at this point. So I know, honestly. I love how Sky Sports, they're just like, Sabra. Sabra? Yeah. Sabra. That's the only thing we're calling him. It's Sabra. Um, we, can, we can take that stance as well on the pod. Uh, yes. But yeah, I I think they did pretty good, cons- all things considered, of how they were projecting. So yeah, Exactly. And I mean, what, Mag- Magnuson finished P12, yeah. um, which is, I mean... It, it's obviously it's not point scoring, but it's especially for Magnuson and where Magnuson was sitting toward the end of last season. It's a, it's a good start for him and Hulkenberg will definitely start outpacing Magnuson and just, you know, keep continuing in that in that realm. He's, you know, very competitive, even in that kind of car. Yeah, yeah, definitely. McLaren also wasn't bad. Like, I know yeah. it's not where they wanted to be, but let's look back one year, right? Piastri retired and Lando had what 27 pit stops so yeah. I think compared to last season's start McLaren didn't do bad they're you know I I don't consider them like a top team I consider them top of the mid pack and I feel like for us giving them that designation they did really well yeah they this is the first time they've scored points in the opening round since 2021 and especially when you think of what a disaster last year was and then even in 2022 they didn't score points to come away with 12 points in the opening round um what you know it it was good they they ran a pretty quiet race and it was really you know lando and, and piastri and then a little bit of piastri fighting with off hamilton um toward the end there um but it you know considering the McLaren expectations, it's not meeting them yet, but they are, and, but they also acknowledge that they're not meeting their expectations yet, but that they are on their way and expect to see that coming up soon. Right. And they really turned it around what in Silverstone last year. Yeah. I want to say. Yeah. Silverstone. And so they've never, at least for my recent history, fact check me if you guys want to, whatever, but they don't start strong they end strong. And so to even Mm -hmm. get 12 points in the first race, I feel like is a huge improvement. Like we, we were saying than prior years. So if they can improve in the beginning half of the season, not to be like amazing, but at least do something better than normal. That's really going to put them in, you know, contention for P2, P3 at the end of the season. Yeah. And I also legitimately do think that they can, you know, leapfrog the, the Mercedes and the Ferraris, you know, potentially as well. Um, And, and, you know, have a, have a good, not you know, not if the Ferrari. I mean, <laughs> not if, not if Carlos is going to go off the wall. Um, but I, I do think that they, they are strong contenders for, you know, P, P3 in the championship. Obviously Definitely. it's March. We have a lot of time. Um, too but early it's predictions. We're calling it. Now. We, we, we love, we love us some too early predictions that we will look back on and either be like, wow, we didn't know what the hell we were talking about. Or, Hey, we're psychic oh, or gosh. clairvoyant. It's clairvoyant. Either way, works for same me. difference. Same, same, but different. Um, yeah. yeah. So speaking of Mercedes, um, I was so disappointed. I had Lewis yeah. on my team because he looked really good, like in testing, and he felt really good with the car. He was looking great in practices, <laughs> and then what happened? Like quality, absolutely terrible. Race, not good. So quiet. Didn't hear from him. You know, he was complaining about the car. There was, oh the, the car had some issues and yeah, Toto Wolf did, did not look issues. happy in the garage no, at all. No. Um, but, but to, it was such a stunning turnaround from their practice and qualifying performances yeah. that it's like, oh, so it's race pace. that's the issue. This is, this is, this is a problem. Yeah. Well, but even in practices and stuff and qualifying, George getting what P3 mm-hmm. was insane. Like it didn't seem like he was going to end up there until the very right. last lap of qualifying. So that was a surprise. And he didn't look amazing in the race. I don't no. Know I mean, he, he made a big mistake late because he, he was, he was combating, you know, the, those car issues and, and gave up P4 to Leclerc. Um, but the Mercedes just 
did not impress me. No, no. I, I mean, I walked away being like, okay, so Red Bull's strong again and Ferrari is going to fight each other all season, which is going to push them, which might be good or might be bad. I think and it'll be it was, a little bit of, of both. Yeah. And then it was kind of like ellipse. <laughs> Nobody else. But yeah. But again, like, first race of the season and this race, I think, is different than the other ones like we've been talking about. So we'll continue to see progress and everything like that. But at the same it, time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and and then and then you have, you know, an Aston Martin. And what were they doing with Fernando's strategy? Oh, I can tell you. Um, they seem to have hired Ferrari's strategist from last year because holy hell, this was a Ferrari 2023 call. I yeah. I can't. Fernando yeah. had a good beginning of the race. And then it was like, but why is he still out? But but now he's still out. But but what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, and there there was definitely some some pace issues that I, I think Aston Martin needs to to work on for for the car. Um, but Fernando should not have have been P nine. He should have been further up the up the grid. And then oh, I mean 100%. Lance Stroll, cons- considering Lance Stroll spun out and 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 recovered from you know P twenty to P ten, a didn't see that coming. B that was a, a strong drive considering the situation that he was in, but yeah. still like strategy wise, that was not a great move for, for Aston Martin. No, no, it wasn't, but it was really surprising that stroll went from P20 to P10. Yeah. Like, and nobody really noticed coming. it. No, no one did like no. moving up, like falling all the way back and coming all the way back up. Like he, I mean, I know Carlos was driver of the day, but that's a, that's a pretty good drive if, if you're Lance Stroll. So yeah, um, yeah, he didn't get as much credit as he probably should have. Typical. Yeah, <laughs> poor guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then we come to the team I wanted to do so well, and they're just I know. Oh, it's so hard, Williams. I wanted so much for them this weekend, and I mm-hmm. am. So Every week I'm disappointed. I love James. I love what he's doing with the team and the direction that he wants to take this team. Alex started pretty good. Um, yeah. But he was really, really struggling with the steering because they put in the new steering wheel and he was really, yeah, really the, struggling the, with that. The new steering wheel had some issues. You know, if, if, you don't, if you're not already aware, um, previously Williams had their, their little dashboard screen that most drivers have on their steering wheels in the car body itself. Um, and they've decided to finally move away from that and join the 21st century, I guess. Um, but not only was, was Alex dealing with issues with that, but there were also overheating issues that he was struggling with yeah. and just was, and then also compounded by the fact that he couldn't change the settings on the steering wheel that he just kept struggling while also having to like fight Kevin Magnuson. So it yeah. like, it it was it, and then you know uh, Logan Sargent was dealing with some some steering issues as well, um, and he you know he spun off and it, you know it was it was pretty rough. Um, so so Williams has a a start. They know that they have a car that can qualify well, um, yeah. or that Alex Albon can make qualify well. Now they just have to improve the car. Yeah, I mean, God, when when sergeant locked up and and like spun out whatever he did um yeah. i was like damn it logan i had such high hopes for you this season i wasn't gonna shit talk you what are you doing it's the first race but hey i picked him p10 <laughs> well <laughs> no. my my big concern when he's <laughs> when he spun out and they started talking about like oh that's a bad spot it's gonna definitely be a safety car is i have to leave because I had to leave to go across town to work some high school basketball championships and I was was like I don't want to watch the end of the race in the car which fortunately I didn't have to and by watching the end of the race in the car I mean it would be listening while I am driving as a safe person who is looking at the traffic in front of me um but like I I was very grateful that that didn't happen and that I was only, you know, I, I left 15 minutes later than I had intended, but still got to where I needed to be on time. Very glad. 
But no, the, my immediate thought was like, oh my gosh, we're going to get a safety car. Like one, he's DNF. Two, we're going to get a safety car. And that's really going to shake everything up. Because I feel like if at that point we got a safety car, the race would have been completely different. I mean, oh, obviously. absolutely. But it really would have like been, I don't know. That would have caused a little bit of chaos. Maybe that would have been chaos that like people would have wanted um, based off of just that the race was pretty quiet, especially at that yeah. point where he spun off. Um, but it, it, no, it didn't happen. But alas, we had a clean race. Yes, we did. And well, we had a clean race, but we also had a little bit of a temper tantrum. A little bit of a tiff between teammates. A huh? tiff. <laughs> yes, a, a a tiff is a great word for it, and it was it was really not a great look. And yes, we are talking about our friends at Visa Cash App RB, um, who, Team card. yeah, they they were they were trying they they were both behind Magnuson in the the last what ten or so laps of the race, um, and it was Magnuson, Sonoda, Ricardo, and. Um, they decided to flip flip the the order around and and see if if Ricardo could you know could manage the overtake instead because you know Sonoda wasn't getting anywhere and Daniel was waiting for it Yuki wasn't happy about it um, they also kind of told them to make the switch in a really bad spot on track um, they did. so it and then it ultimately didn't work out I think that if I think that if it had been done a couple laps earlier Ricardo would have been able to overtake Magnuson um he did have DRS you know for for the most part it was just yeah. you know, a, a matter of not being you know not having the time to make that overtake happen and stick um but yeah and then what what really came to to an issue was what happened after the race on the cool down lap yep on the cooldown. What happened, Catherine? <laughs> um, Yuki decided to send it past uh, past Ricardo out of spite. He locked up, and if if it could have been really bad, and you know, it's it's one of those things where you know we we all it's like we we're always like oh ah little Yuki is is you know Yuki is Yuki and everything, but this was kind of the most you know, rookie-ish move Yuki Sonoda has made in his, you know, in his career as a Formula One driver. And considering this is what his fourth, fifth season at this point, I've lost track. Like th this is not like if, if he has grievances, he should wait for, you know, the, their, the driver, you know, the team meeting afterwards. Um, yeah. And no, it was so reckless and like it, it could, he really reckless. I mean, he locked up. He could have gotten hit. He could have hit Danny. It's the cooldown lap. The race is over. Like, get over it. It's fine. I know he was unhappy with the team orders, but that's the way this works. It's a team environment, and sometimes you have to just suck it up and go for it. Yuki will always be a second-year driver to me. I don't care how long he has a right? seat. He will always be a second-year driver. Again, I'm terrible with time, but I swear he's he's in his second season always. Yeah, um, I I think it's really interesting to see just because going off of last season, Yuki and Danny have such a good rapport and they get along so well. And now to see in the first race, it just really like flip because Danny started yelling about Yuki on the team radio. Yuki was pissed yelling about Danny. And so I don't know if it's been, again, the whole like Christian Horner biggest champion behind Daniel Ricardo thing to where – Yuki it's been Yuki's team for a long time because he's been there you know the longest whatever and I wonder if yeah. he's just like feeling that shift of the favoritism towards Danny even though I mean Yuki was driving a better race he out qualified Danny he was doing better so I think that might be playing into it too it's a I mean obviously there's going to be some ego in it but I don't know it'll be interesting to see how it develops across the season yeah, it was just it was just really not a good look. Though it did get my new favorite insult of all time to to become a thing when um, Daniel Ricardo called Yuki on the radio an effing helmet. Um, so I I don't know what that means. I I want to know, but I want it, clarification. It, was, it you know it's it's not something that we want to see happen, um, especially in a team that has so much potential. So and and the other thing to note with that is Franz Toss, the the only team principal that 
Toro Rosso are, you know, Alpha Tauri RB has ever, or not even RB has ever had is no longer there. He's retired. He is, he's, you know, living the dream watching races from, from his home. It, it, I don't even remember where, but he, he's in Austria. Exactly. Um, and we have a brand new team principal in Laurent Mekis who came from Ferrari um, on the team now. So this is, this is a very new environment, a very young environment for this team um, yeah. that I think that that's something that is going to be some an underrated sort of by play to the results that this team gets this oh, year. Oh, 100%. I mean, the drivers are definitely going to take every inch they can and see how far they can mm-hmm. push the team principal and what they can get away with. And I think how they respond to Yuki after this weekend will really kind of set a precedent for for how his first year as a, a team principal will be. Yeah, but it's also, you know, going going back to the the decision for te- for to swap drivers in the first place, which also happened at Aston Martin and no one complained, was um that is just kind of a fact of life when you have two driver your your two drivers are driving one two behind the other. Um and you know, if one driver can't, you know, make it past the the car in front of them, then you know, logic says let the other driver try. Yeah. Well, or if you're Carlos Franco, signs, then you just, you just, you send <laughs> you it. You create your own strategy and you do it yourself. Yes. Um, but and also Aston Martin, Martin is different. Yeah. Like it's stroll, you know, I feel like he's just happy to be there. Just making dad happy. Yeah. <laughs> doing what he can. Um, not to say he's not like a competitive guy, but I think he's just very much I don't want to say more seasoned because I think him and Yuki came in again. I can never keep track of how many seasons Yuki's actually been in it, but yeah, um, Stroll just has a different demeanor, right? And he understands very understands how it works because sometimes they have to let Stroll through, sometimes they let Alonzo through. That's just how it works. Um, Yuki has never really taken that well, though, regardless of who his teammate is. Correct, and he's had a lot of teammates in the last year. <laughs> He has. Poor guy. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But no, but it was good. Overall, I was happy to see racing again. Um, Yeah. It kind of went how I was expecting it to go with Red Bull maxing out the points, um, which is unfortunate. But, you know, it is what it is. But I don't think this means that the season's over already. Like, I truly think it's like, yes, it was a runaway win. And Checo got P2, but I think the after them, I think everyone's pretty close to where it's not going to be insane. Like, I feel like the first race of the season last season, it was like such a big gap from mm-hmm. everybody where Checo to Carlos was not a huge gap. It was what, three seconds? Yes. And so, that was primarily a a questionable decision on tires because you know Carlos asked you know when are, when are the when are the hards gonna be faster than the softs and they yeah. weren't. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like Max will always be Max, but I don't think it's gonna be a runaway for Red Bull. Yeah, I mean, do I think that this is going to be a race for P two in the championship? Yes. Will it be a lot closer than last season? Definitely. Also, yes. Um, you know, the cars are going to develop very quickly. Um, we've already seen a lot of potential and, you know, Ferrari is going to be very strong. And like we've said, these drivers are going to be driving for their seats and that's right. going to lead to a lot more of, you know, pushing it to the limit even more than we already do in this sport to yeah. really, you know, show that, you know, they're they're worth it and we're gonna see we're gonna see some surprise you know victories we're gonna see some surprise podiums um and you know it's not over in you know race one of 24 just because max won by 24 22 seconds and no. you know we've, we've also gone in depth on this in um our from the dm segment on is max's dominance destroying formula one which the spoiler alert to that episode the answer is no <laughs> no and i'll give you this I think it's going to be a race for P2 in the Drivers' Championship, but not Constructors. Yes. I think Checo's a huge wild card. Like, if he shows consistency and he starts qualifying better than he did last year, then I think that's really going to be the turning point for me of, okay, they're winning 
drivers and constructors. But yeah. if Ferrari continues to do well and both cars can one stay in the race and score points and sometimes get ahead of Checo or, you know, Checo double DNFs. Um, I think Ferrari could be a contender in constructors. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's going to be a a lot of really big question marks and it's too soon to tell. This is race one. No, Catherine, we're predicting the season. Now (laughs) we did our 2024 prediction. Now we're doing another (laughs) after one race. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, Uh, But speaking speaking of of predictions, predictions. And I'm guessing that wasn't in line because of the Argentina internet delay, but we said it at the <laughs> same time. Um, so our Bahrain prediction. So we had how many points on the table here? We had one for pole, five for podium, and three for P10. So that's yes. what, nine points. And we each walked away with one. So yeah, 13. we did. We both correctly picked Max Verstappen for pole. Um, Mm -hmm. Like we mentioned earlier, he did get, you know, the grand slam. So he got pole, he won, and he had fastest lap. Um, And led every lap. Yeah. Yay. Um, So then we get to our podium. And we set very clear (laughs) rules and guidelines for a reason. So the actual podium was Max Checo Carlos. Um, Mm -hmm. Catherine actually had the podium, but the wrong order. She had Max Carlos Checo, so she gets zero You know, points. if Ferrari had a better strategy, I would be walking away with five points right now. And I am again, mad about blaming, that. Once again, we're blaming Ferrari's strategy. Thanks, um, Ferrari, for nothing. Yeah, and I had Max Carlos Lewis. Um, again, did this before uh, all of the free practices and before qualifying. This is just coming out of testing um won't make that mistake again Um, I mean we're still gonna do our predictions before (laughs) the free practices just by virtue of when we record so we're we're, we'll we still have every opportunity to be either very right or very very wrong but at least we have a little bit more to go off of I'm just saying I won't make the mistake of you know randomly selecting Lewis until he starts (laughs) delivering that's what I meant okay (laughs) it's okay I wouldn't I, I I wouldn't do it period (laughs) <laughs> I'm just getting ready for next season when I have to start really cheering for him. So, <laughs> yeah. um, honestly, no, I'll probably follow Carlos wherever he goes. Cause he's my favorite driver. So <laughs> I may not be a Ferrari fan anymore. Oh my god! Buy the $650 Ferrari sweatshirt. <laughs> you god. want that sweatshirt anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm getting it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and then P10, you had Logan. I had Alex. We were Team Williams. Very wrong. Very wrong. Lance Stroll got uh, P10, which, again, heck of a drive from him going from P- P20 all the way to P10. So good on him. And then the two predictions we make that we don't award points to, we both nailed. So we said yep. it was going to be a good, clean race, no uh, DNFs, and we were right. Um Sergeant, like I said, worried me a little bit, um, tiny but bit. we made it out clean. And then who's going to do a dumb? We said Alpine. So and they did. We, yeah, you had them, you know, fighting each other out of the points. I said they're going to prevent themselves, you know, from scoring. Essentially the same thing. Yeah. Alpine did not have a great race. So no, they did not. And uh, I'm I'm a little I'm a little concerned that uh, their their consortium of famous people is also probably very concerned. <laughs> Well, you live and you learn, right? Yep, pretty uh, much. Well, that's how our predictions went. So we each have a point going into the second week of racing. We'll continue to update our, our points and track them. Um, I have a feeling, though, we're going to just keep picking the same shit and we're going to end up, like, very, very even. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll have to uh, put some rules in there, but... It'll be fun. I'm excited. We'll it's it's funny. When you start awarding points, I start taking it more seriously. <laughs> the competitiveness yes. of me comes out. Yes. But, oh, we are at the end of the podcast, and it's time for Catherine's F1 fun fact. So what is our fun fact for the first weekend of racing? So 
for the F1 fun fact, it's not always going to be associated with the race that we are competing in. Um, but for this one, I thought it really stood out that this was the first Bahrain Grand Prix not to feature a retirement or a safety car, which, like we said earlier, uh, Logan worried us a little bit because we would have had both of those things. But this is also the first season opener in F1 history with zero retirements. Not flawless performances from every car, but every car made it across that finish line, even if half of those cars were lapped by Max Verstappen. <laughs> oh, that's a good fun fact. That's interesting that yeah. there's it's the first uh, F1 season opener without a retirement. Yeah, I thought that was, that was interesting. We've we've had a lot of years of of Formula One and Formula One season openers, and to to like like never, never. not have a retirement is that's kind of wild. Yeah, no, it, it absolutely is. But it, overall, again, good race. Retirements yeah. are, you know, not fun, but it does shake things up a bit when you get a safety car. It changes, you know, how the race is going. Um, yeah. But glad everyone had a good clean race for the first race. I'm happy to be racing again. I'm very much so looking forward to this season. I think, you know, like we've mentioned a thousand and one times, it is the season for what, 12 14 however many drivers to get a seat next year um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be good it's gonna be a good season yeah it's gonna be really good I I I liked what I saw on track today obviously my team beat the pants off everyone but just you know generally I I liked what I saw I love that we're back um and there's 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 nothing more more fun than than Formula One whether it's a Saturday or a Sunday and of course next week will be another Saturday race because why not we do we do have another Saturday race so that'll be and it's also at a good uh race time for me that 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 makes me happy because the race starts at like 10 my time so I can like not have to wake up at 6 a.m so I don't know if I get to watch Saudi Arabia you're traveling I'm traveling so this is I only have one race in Argentina and then the next six races or whatever I'll be in the U.S. so yes (laughs) no more Argentina Wi-Fi thank you yes I know it's such a pain, but yeah. So depend TBD on my uh, landing if I have delays or not, but I might be able to catch Saudi. That or I just have to watch a recording, which is fine. Either yep. way, either way, either way. But before we get to Saudi Arabia, we do have our F one Academy season preview coming out on Tuesday. So look forward to that. We are going to be covering the F one Academy more this season. One because it interests us and two, because it falls in line with race weekends for F1. Thank so we'll goodness. Be, we'll be throwing that in um, on their re- race weekends as well, but we are going to do a full season preview for them coming out on Tuesday. Now that all of the seats are announced, um, they weren't quite announced until like what last week. Yeah. Um, there, there were some, there were some late, late arrivals. Yeah. So now that everything is finalized for their seats. Uh, we're going to do a season preview for you coming out on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, well, we made it to uh, to the season. I'm very excited. First full season of Going Off Track. That has been the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>